All right, on this problem, we've got an open top box that we're going to make by cutting congruent squares of length x from corners of a 20 by 25 inch sheet of cardboard and bending the sides up. How large should the squares be to make the box hold as much as possible? And what are those dimensions? So let's go ahead and give ourselves a box that we're going to work with here. And it's supposed to be 20 by 25. That doesn't look too bad, actually, okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to say that this is 25 right here and this is 20 right here. Now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to take x units that we're going to cut out of each corner of the box. And when we cut those corners out, that's going to give us the edge of the box. So try this at home even. And take a flat sheet of paper, cut out squares in each corner, and when you fold what's left straight up, you're going to create a box. And we want to create a box with maximum volume. And volume is equal to length times width times height. Well, on this particular problem, one thing that we're going to learn, one thing that we have learned that we will use, is that these x's, that's our height. So x. Uh, is equal to height. Length, I don't like the way I wrote that. Let me write it the other way around. Height is equal to x. Length we need to find and width we need to find. So <clears throat> if I take x units from here and x units from here, then this length is no longer 20. It stops short by two x's. So this, this length would be 20 minus 2x. The other one, if you look at this guy, we're taking x units off from both sides here. That gives us a 25 minus 2x length. All right. And so what's the volume of my box going to be when I fold the sides up? The, vo the volume is going to be x times... 20 minus 2x times 25 minus 2x. So what we need to do is find the derivative of that. And I think it'll be easiest if we foil this thing out first and put all the like terms together and then come back through and take a derivative. So I'm going to distribute my x real quick. And that's going to be 20x minus 2x squared times 25 minus 2x and then just multiply this part out so 20x times 25 that's 500x and then 20x times the negative 2 is minus 40x squared and then negative 2x squared times 5 that's 50x squared and then negative 2x squared times negative 2x plus 4 4x cubed. So here's here's my volume, and when I clean this up a little bit more, I end up with 500x minus 10x squared plus 4x cubed. All right. All right, I caught a mistake here. We should have this guy right here should be a minus negative 2x squared times positive 25, which makes this a negative 90. There we go. There's my volume. And in order to find the max volume of this thing, I need to now find the derivative. So 500 then minus 180x plus 12x squared. So what I would recommend on this, it doesn't look like it's going to be anything that would factor. Um, when I set this thing equal to 0, is 500, I don't know if, if any of these numbers are divided by 12. Let's see. 180 divided by 12 is 15. 500 divided by 12 doesn't work. 
Um, what about 500 divided by 6? I don't think that's going to work. So I can divide a 2 out of everything. That gives me 250 minus 90x plus 6x squared. But I'm pretty sure that doesn't factor either. So you've got two options then. One is to use quadratic formula, and the other one is to graph it and find where it crosses the x-axis. Now, because we need to know exactly um, ex the exact value of x, like how much to cut, I would prefer a decimal answer here. Uh, sometimes you can get away with using the square root, but if you were to, if you were to give me an answer of x of the square root of 23, that doesn't help me out very much. That's between um, 4 and 5, closer to 5, not so much 4, but if you told me I needed to cut 4.87 inches in, that gives me a lot more to work with just for my own personal taste. So what I would recommend right now is that you go ahead and graph 6x squared, uh, 250 minus 90x plus 6x squared, graph that, find where it crosses the x-axis. Now, let's talk about values of x that we can use. Think about this real quick. When I cut my, when I cut these x values out of my rectangle, I can, in theory, cut all the way to the center of a side, okay, in theory. But, I can only cut to the center of the shortest side and then I run out of room. So what I want to do is I want to say that I can only cut in 10 inches. So when I am looking for values of X, I'm going to put a restriction that that value of X has to be larger than zero and less than, I don't know why I wrote equal to, it needs to be larger than zero and less than 10. So that's the restriction that we're going to look at. So when you when you graph this guy and you look for the zeros here, you have to pick then the zeros that are between 0 and 10. And there may be one or two, but those are the only ones you can use. If you get one that's a negative value, you can't use it. We're going to make positive cuts. If you get one that's like, if you get an x value of, say, 11.7, you can't use that. That's too much. Okay, so when you punch this into your calculator, you're going to get two things. You're going to get x equals uh, 3.68, and you're going to get x equals 11.32. So when you graph it and find those zeros, these are the two zeros you get. This guy, we're not going to use. Why? Because he's outside of the range of values that are possible for this particular problem. So the answer then for us is going to be this x equals 3.68, okay? What does that mean? That means that if I cut in 3, wow, that's really ugly. If I cut in 3.68 units from each corner on each side, that that'll give me the height of my box. And so when I plug 3.68 in for my length, and 3.68 in for my width, um, this will give me the dimensions of my box. So when I punch those in, um, 20 minus, let's see here, I'll just punch it in for 20 minus 2 times 3.68 is 12.64, and 25 minus 2 times 3.68. 17.64 so these are my dimensions 3.68 by 12.64 by 17.64 those are my dimensions my volume for that particular guy then you just multiply all those dudes out and you should get I think 820.53 let me just double check 3.68 times 12.64 times 17.64 I get 820.53 units cubed and that would be the volume of this box for this problem.